Hello everyone, I'm Theophanes Sandiles from Inrian the Université Paris-Saclay in Paris. So in this talk I will present Track Graphics, which is a new approach for designing data visualizations. Now, previous work in the community of information visualization has observed that traditional visualization tools target mainly scientists and data analysis tasks and in such tools, users start with a concrete dataset and produce a graph by mapping the dimensions of the data to the graphical parameters of a chosen template. So, in visualization grammars and toolkits can support a richer range of visualizations. But again, in order to create a graph, we describe how the variables of a dataset are mapped to the properties of the visual objects. Now, in start graphics, we follow the opposite direction. So visualization creation is fully driven by the graphics. Data variables are derived at the very end of the process from the structure of the graphics. So the goal of this approach is to support design rather than data analysis tasks. So we'll start with an example where I reproduce a flow diagram, a Sankey diagram, which depicts the change in council control after the 2018 local election in the UK. So let's see this example. So I start by drawing a rectangle and from this I create a stacked bar chart, which you see here after grouping them together. I will then replicate it again and after repositioning I will merge the two groups into a larger collection. I now turn to the inspector and I decide to vary the fill color within, sub, within its subgroup. You can see that colors are, are synchronized between the two. As I change the colors, things are consistent between the two subgroups. And then I will continue by drawing the links of my flow diagram. As you see, as I draw the links, the bar heights are automatically adapted. Now, what is more important is that the structure of links is automatically created and is available in the inspector. As I go to the inspector, this is my link structure. I will bring it by dragging to the spreadsheet. And this is a template for my dataset. Then I create a symbolic mapping and then type the values that represent the UK political parties. As you see, other cells of my table automatically change as I type. And this helps encode my data faster. I will then map the flow weights to the number of cancels by using a simple transform transformation function, mapping, right? And then type my values. And of course, all these views, all the different views of my user, of my user interface are synchronized. So I can see how these changes affect my visuals, my graphics. I go back to the graphics to improve the layout. I will also change the gaps as you see here, between the bars, there is, there is this tool, and also customize the colors. Then I go to the spreadsheet where I choose to display the political parties as labels in my diagram. There is other misinformation as labels, so I will go back to the inspector to bring some uh, structure for some uh, properties from the inspector and assign them to data variables. I will turn them to data variables and then show them in my diagram and this is the final visualization. There is also this component here, which you see here, this is my library, a library that lets me reuse my previous designs. For example, I bring my previous design that I just created to the canvas and I further change it and I can also uh, bring new data to it. That's new data. This is another example, another template, which are used to create a nested area chart. Now, previous work has looked at how designers design for data, and here I summarize some key findings of a study that has greatly influenced my work. A first observation made by the authors of the study is that designers create visualization in a top-down graphical process. A second observation is that they tend to think of, influence, of how to influence existing graphics that they have already created in the past. Third, Designers prefer flexible environments that do not reinforce a specific order of operations. And finally, manual encoding is not only tolerated, but even embraced by designers. Now, in the last few years, the InfoViz community has introduced a range of design-oriented systems, and some of these systems partly require programming workflows, as the ones that you see here, 
other focus on the design of expressive data-driven infographics, and the third category supports the authoring of custom visualizations with complex layouts. And I would like to highlight these three systems here for uh, three main reasons. First, because they support similar visualizations as Strat Graphics. They also offer vector graphics editing tools as Strat Graphics, but most, what's more important is that their authors gathered together and reflected on their systems, limitations and assumptions. And these are two important conclusions about their assumptions. First, that data first are appropriately pre-formatted before the task. And second, that people want to author a chart, not design one. So in particular, they assume that users come with a specific chart design in mind. And as a result, graphics are bound to data at the very first steps of the authoring process in these systems. So let's go back to the star graphics user interface. So we identify four main components here. So we have a, a library that enables designers to reuse their past designs. There is a sketcher, which is a vector graphics editor for drawing graphics in separation from any data. The inspector that exposes and structures the properties of a visualization uh, and the visualization objects. And a spreadsheet for turning graphical, stru graphical structures to data schemas and then exploring some bindings between data and the graphics. Now, star graphics visualizations are hierarchies. And as in other, like, other systems like, for example, Data Illustrator, they contain marks, such as squares, lines, and text, groups of such primitives, and then collections. So in this example, for example, I highlight a group, the sailboat, within a collection that represents a custom area chart. Groups and collections have similar representation and creative process in star graphics, but they are, however, somehow distinct. Groups consist of a fixed number of objects, which can be either marks or lower level groups. In contrast, collections group a variable number of objects, which can be marks, groups, or sub-collections. Now, a main focus of the, star of the star graphics approach is on how to organize the properties of groups and collections without referring to data. So let's consider a collection of four rectangular shapes. And let's focus on these particular properties. We observe that the y-coordinate, the rotation of all rectangles is common or shared as I write here. And in contrast, the other four properties, for example, the fill color, are variable, they vary. And we'll see later that variable properties provide the templates of data tables. Now, let's see here how the properties of the children nodes of the collection are grouped in the inspector. So the fill color is a shared property. So when we change it, we we'll see that all sibling nodes are also changed. And we can make it, however, variable by dragging and then change the color of individual children. In contrast, the height is variable here, but we decide to make it share, and now all the children heights are bound together. Now, more generally, a visualization hierarchy can support different levels of sharing, for example, no sharing at all, A level sharing, B level sharing, A and B level sharing at the same time, where A and B here refer to the level of nesting, and of course, this generalizes to deeper visualization hierarchies. In groups, we can share the properties of a subset of grouped objects. So let's create here, in this example, a group from scratch by replicating the first rectangle. And here I will change the top rectangle to a triangle and also change its color and its height. So star graphics offers a by example specification approach, trying to bind all common properties of children nodes. After grouping, now star graphics binds the height of the three rectangles, but also binds the width of all the shapes together. I can break a binding and recreate it from in the specter. Uh, when I change here the color, the color of all the rectangles changes at the same time. Now, star graphics relies, relies on two flexible layout mechanisms. Alignment is easily controlled by the sharing of the X and Y properties of the children in a group or collection. It further provides techniques of persistent distribution and stickiness that helps designers to have full control of the visualization layout. Now, star graphics visualizations are data agnostic. 
but at any moment designers can link them with data through the spreadsheet. Here I drag the variable properties of the collection and drop them into the spreadsheet and create to create a table. I decide to map the x-axis to a data dimension year here. I this generate uh, some default values and I display the variable on the visualization and then type the individual year values. And I see how this updates on my canvas on the left, on the visualization on the left. Now, a full struct graphics visualization, all struct, struct graphics visualizations or the individual nodes can be added to the library. Designers can then easily reuse them. As you see, I added to the library with, with just a click and then I bring them by dragging to the canvas. So visualizations are stored as data agnostic JSON snippets and this is, facilitates their reuse and sharing. Now, we provide a gallery with videos and other resources. Several of our visualizations are applications or variations of examples offered by the authors of Data Illustrator and Charticulator. We also collected feedback by professional designers and IFOVIS experts. And these are some comments by two designers who were especially enthusiastic about the approach. So one says here, it takes me much longer with my usual software. The other one says allows that this tool allows to create visually, start visually, then to insert real values. Really easier than struggling with their setting panels and tabs of a pre-existing graph in Excel. Participants also reflected on the distinction between graphics-driven versus data-driven visualization design. I cite some representative comments here. For example, uh, participant 7 argues that both directions are true depending on the task, but also mentions that it's always important to have an idea of how the visualization looks even when data are incomplete or not available. And the other participant here mentions, highlights that eventually you always have to plug in data to test a visualization design. Now, I will end with some limitations of the current implementation. First, property stack structures in the inspector become more and more complex as visualization hierarchies grow, and we need to improve the user interface to deal with this complexity. Now, furthermore, building a visualization with a large number of data points can be time-consuming because all data points are manually generated in the sketcher, and a solution is to allow users to populate new data points from the tables in the spreadsheet directly. So you have probably noticed that Strat Graphics lacks support for non-Cartesian coordinate systems or custom primitive shapes, which are future goals. So to conclude, I presented Strat Graphics, a system for design visualizations through reusable graphical structures. Code and supplementary materials are publicly available, available for download, and I will be very happy to provide further details or answer your questions. Thank you.